Hello, my dear students. Today onwards, we will be discussing viva on chemistry practicals. In the beginning of chemistry practicals, we have to perform some experiments on basic techniques. Once we know basic techniques, then we can perform practicals or other experiments. Basic techniques includes how to filter, how to transfer liquid, how to heat, and how to stir, how to cut a glass tube, how to insert a, a glass tube into the cork, how to uh, bore a cork. Cork is the one which we use to close the mouth of the round bottom flask or uh, Filtration flask or distillation flask. Sometimes that cork will be having hole or not. If it is having hole, then okay. Otherwise, we have to make a hole. Okay, then we have to insert a thistle funnel or delivery tube or a glass tube. So all these are our requirements in the chemistry laboratory. So that's why we have to learn not all some basic techniques. In that today. Uh, we will be discussing some basic techniques on uh, boring uh, cork and about the some other parts of bunsen burner okay so with this i welcome you all for viva uh, on chemistry practicals why is a bunsen burner provided with air holes this you might have seen in your kitchen also where you are a burner which is in the kitchen uh, having holes why holes air holes because it is for the proper supply of oxygen which is a supporter of combustion so for the combustion that to for the proper combustion you have to supply proper amount of oxygen so that it burns with a blue flame and blue flame gives maximum heat with less residue okay that's why so because of these two purposes and to regulate the amount of supply of uh, uh, air to the what uh, fuel which is there in the cylinder we have to supply uh, what uh, uh, air and that's why air holes are there not only in the chemistry laboratory even in the our kitchen also okay right next what type of flame would you use for general heating purpose just now i told under the first question uh, there are two types of flames one is sooty flame sooty is what smoky which gives smoke second one is non sooty which will not give smoke so sooty flame is what yellowish or yellowish black and so on whereas non sooty non smoky is bluish flame the bluish flame is the best flame therefore uh, uh, the type of flame we uh, would expect uh, from the burner by you after adjusting the regulator for the proper supply of uh, uh, air is what a uh, bluish flame okay right what is the use of a fume cupboard it is used to perform those experiments which involve the production of poisonous gases or vapors see sometimes we have to deal with some harmful chemicals or poisonous chemicals okay that time uh, it is not advisable to perform in the general laboratory area where other people are there other kind of uh, experiments will be going on so when we produce some poisonous gas it not only harms us it also harms the environment and the other part of the laboratory so therefore uh, to conduct those experiments uh, there is a separate cupboard or the room or the chamber is made and they are called what fume cupboard or the fume chambers okay uh, in some hotels nowadays uh, smoking is not allowed okay so but by chance customer if demand smoking uh, for such customers for smokers there is a separate chamber known as the uh, smoke zone or the smoke cupboard or the smoke uh, uh, area uh, where a smoke room is there so there we have to go and smoke okay so that only that part is affected 
not the other part. Okay, that's why in the same way, even in the laboratory also, whenever we perform some poisonous, uh, whenever we whenever we deal with the poisonous chemicals, harm harmful chemicals, the time it is best to perform in the fume cupboard. It is for the uh, keeping on safety precautions. Okay, right. Why is a broad flame used for bending a glass tube? If a narrow flame is used, folds are formed at the bend. See this uh, when we whenever we want to bend a glass tube, okay. So glass is a super cooled liquid. When you heat the glass, it becomes liquid. Then you can bend it in any form, okay. So but whenever you are bending, that time we use broad flame so that uh, heat is supplied uniformly where the bend is there, so that uh, folds are not formed. If the folds are formed. Then uh, the tube is not a good tube. Whenever you want to uh, water, use it as a delivery tube for the water or for the gas. If folds are there, then those folds uh, will will act as the obstacles. Okay, that's why uh, for this purpose we use broad flame whenever we bend a glass tube. This you will understand when you perform. Okay, uh, but in some uh, syllabus, uh, in some classes, this uh, bending a glass tube is are taken out just a normal bending of a glass tube is there okay right next why does glass not possesses a sharp melting point first let us understand what is a glass glass is a mixture first and glass is an amorphous solid and remember among the solid we have the two types one is amorphous solid and the other one is Uh, crystalline solid crystalline have what is crystalline crystalline is what they have the regular arrangement of structure which is called as what lattice so because of the regular arrangement uh, they occur as a crystalline structure we when you when we touch we feel it crystals okay and they have the special properties which includes a sharp melting point so at a particular for example uh, a particular compound whose melting point is around 39.1 uh, uh, degree centigrade it will melt at 39.11 because the, because of what regular arrangement so at a time all the what uh, molecules come close and they start flowing this will happen but whereas in the case of amorphous uh, it is not a it is not an uh, what a regular arrangement it is called irregular arrangement so somewhere if you go to the molecular level of the amorphous solids Some area regular and some is some is irregular. Other part regular, other part irregular. So regularity is not maintained. So long range uh, structure uh, will not have regular arrangement because of this. Whenever uh, crystalline type is there, they will melt properly. When the amorphous is there, uh, they don't melt properly. That's why because of this irregular arrangement, not in a proper order, uh, we don't have a sharp melting point for the A glass because it belongs to amorphous solid category. Okay, right. Which type of glass softens readily? Is it soda lime glass or borosilicate glass? It is soda lime glass because if you see the borosilicate glass, the name itself indicates it contains boron and silicate, silicon. What is silicon? Silicon is a part of sand, SiO2. Sand is very hard. So when the sand and the boron compounds are fused together in the laboratory or in the industry in the furnace so we get a borosilicate glass okay so that borosilicate glass is very hard so for that uh, to soften that we require lot of energy whereas soda lime is normal uh, calcium compounds or other compounds are there. therefore so because of this reason uh, soda lime glass uh, uh, softens readily compared to the borosilicate glass and the borosilicate glass is Uh, heat resistant therefore such glass is used for making hard glass test tube beakers and the uh, round pattern flask where we perform some heating experiments okay right next why is it required to round off the freshly cut edges of glass tube whenever you cut a glass tube with a file in the laboratory say they develop some sharp edges So when they develop a sharp edges, uh, they hard water. Uh, that means uh, uh, because of sharpness, uh, we get a hurt. So in handling, uh, it is very difficult. So it may uh, 
injuries may happen to our fingers. So to avoid all this, once we cut the glass tube, so we will file it, we will polish it, so that uh, the sharp edge points become soft and we can make it a what uh, on, on, on a proper sh shape, so that we can, when with a uh, without gloves also we can handle such a glass tube. Okay, so to uh, to melt to make it soft the sharp edge after the cut we go for uh, what uh, freshly cut edges are uh, sharpened or uh, it is uh, heated so that they melt and they become soft then it is solidified okay right why should the tube be rotated while heating so whenever if you simply heat at a particular one particular point that means you are not supplying uniform heat. When you supply uniform heat, then the entire glass uh, it will melt so that we, we can easily bend it properly. If you heat only at a particular point, only that becomes soft, and when you bend it, only that will bend, uh, the, the upper part will not bend properly. Okay, so for the uniform heating, for the proper bending, so we have to keep protecting the area where you are heating, and because of this reason. Uh, we have to uh, keep moving the water, the glass tube in your hand. Okay, right. Next, why why is the red hot tube bent slowly? Red hot tube is very soft. The name itself indicates it's a red hot. Okay, it is almost liquid, very soft. So it might flatten if it is bent suddenly. So slow process of bending prevents. Flattening of glass tube. That's why we have to bend slowly when the glass is in red hot condition. Okay, so that a proper bending and a proper gap and a proper glass tube is made, proper delivery tube is made, L shape or V shape. Okay, so accordingly we used as per the requirement or the demand. Okay, right. And today's last uh, viva for the basic techniques is what? What is the role of glycerin? In the process of boring, so here boring is what we we heard borewell. No, so boring is boring the earth crust to get the water using the machines. In the same way, in the laboratory, I told whenever we have the cork, that cork is used to close the uh, round bottom flask. Sometimes uh, it, uh, into the uh, cork we have to make a hole. So to the hole we fix the diesel funnel or a delivery tube. Okay, right now. When we make a, a hole in the water cork or a bore a hole in the cork, uh, it is a rough surface area. Okay, so we apply glycerin so that it lubricates that area. Then, around say we can uh, water fix the delivery tube for our uh, requirement. So it is just for our uh, laboratory requirement we do all these uh, basic techniques. So my dear friends, today we learned some techniques. Uh, on this, we may ask some questions. Uh, in the theory itself. So that's why uh, Viva session was conducted today. And in our next session, we conduct many more Viva sessions, what we have done uh, in the past uh, on volumetric and on the qualitative, so that Viva part is completed. And on the Viva, uh, what? Uh, we will have a separate section in the theory paper, and we, you can answer easily. So, okay, my dear friends, we will wind up today's session. And in next session, we will do some other viva and some other part of the chemistry article. Till then, have a nice time and thank you and all.